Welcome, beloved of God, to worship as Grace Baptist Church. Most Sundays we gather in the sanctuary. We say something like, Welcome to the worship of God at Grace Baptist Church. But today in this strange pandemic wilderness, we find ourselves reassessing so many things, including our language. Speaking of reassessing, we had hoped to bring worship to you from the gathering place at Grace one more week. But late in the week, we've had to reassess the safety of our staff gathering all in one place. So today we bring the service of worship to you from several different places. Yet still, as Grace Baptist Church, even if not at Grace Baptist Church, we trust that still our gifts are being knit together in the work of love. We know that church is not our building, and yet we are learning exactly what that truth means and how to live it. So today, as we prepare our hearts to worship, we do so not at the church, but absolutely as the church. Some of you will watch this on Facebook Live, and others will access it at some other time. We encourage you, if you're watching it live, to share your greetings and prayers and comments throughout the service. However you join your heart and mind and spirit and soul in this time, we pray that this time of worship is meaningful to you, that it is a comfort to you, that you experience the presence of God, and we are trusting that our praise and worship of God remains pleasing to God no matter the form and no matter the place. So wherever you are as you worship, we invite you to light a candle symbolizing the light of Christ present with you and with all of us, and the light and presence of Christ within you and within all of us. Come and let us worship. This song, Come to Me, Lamb of God, was written by one of our Grace Baptist hymn writers, Linda Young Seville. Come to me, Lamb of God, I am trying. Please join me in our call to worship. In the stillness, in the quiet, in all that rests on our minds and hearts, our souls wait for you, O God, in everything moving too quickly, in our feelings of helplessness before all the obstacles that surround, as anxiety abounds and needs exceed our capacities. Our souls wait for you, O oh God. Though we cannot yet perceive the way from here, we do not give up on each other. We do not give in to despair. We trust in the one who has companioned life and love through the troubles of every generation. 
Our hope is this, through all things, God resides within us, with us, and around us. Let us pray to God in whom we nest, who resides with us, within us, and all around us. God of the dead and God of the living, hold us close as we linger in these delicate days. May we perceive with clarity all that you would have us glean from what surrounds. Where a collective lack of love and justice are failing us, embolden us to live differently today. Let your spirit come swiftly and transform us with hope. Amen. Hymn number 618, How Firm a Foundation. We will sing the first and second stanzas. This story is called, Jesus Calms the Storm. Let's go to the other side of a lake, Jesus suggested one day, wanting to find a quiet place to rest. He and his disciples got into a boat and started sailing. Bright sunlight sparkled on the water and gentle waves rocked Jesus to sleep. But while he napped, the wind began to blow, and waves crashed onto the deck. The boat was filling with water, and the disciples were terrified it would sink. Master! Master! they cried. Wake up! We are going to drown! Jesus stood and spoke quietly to the wind. Calm, be gentle. And to the waves he said, Peace, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped blowing, the waves stopped crashing, and all was peaceful once again. Jesus turned to his friends. Why were you afraid? Don't you trust God to protect you? The disciples stared at each other with their mouths hanging open in amazement. Who is this man? they whispered. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Dear God, help me to trust you when I am afraid. Amen.
I'm singing Through all the tumult and the strife I hear that music ringing It finds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost call While to that rock I'm clinging since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Although we're not gathering in our church building, certainly the work of the church goes on and God's work in the world continues and perhaps even expands in the midst of our current reality. Our offering that we would have in any worship service remains an integral part of our worship together. We know that people are struggling with income and employment, with food security and other challenges. And as the church, we want to respond boldly and out of our confidence in God's abundance. On Friday and today, around noon, dollars that you and I have shared and committed to God's work in the world are being used to purchase boxed lunches for some of our city's most vulnerable citizens. 30 people experiencing homelessness, but currently housed in hotels due to COVID-19, are receiving boxed lunches to keep them fed. And so today we invite your support of urgent needs such as these and God's work through grace by making a gift to our general fund or to our benevolence fund which you can do at gbconline.org forward slash give or by placing a check in the mail or taking a moment to set up bill pay through your bank because even in these uncertain times we face dif difficult realities in the company of God and one another. Together, we can hold what must be held. Together, as the body of Christ, we can support those who need it most. And together, we can tend life, even in the midst of death. For God is with us, God is for us, and God has given us all that we need. Let us share what we have in love. Will you join your hearts with mine as we pray together? Beloved one, you multiply all that we bring in love. As we remember those struggling with lack today, lack of connection, lack of rest, lack of resources, or lack of hope, we remember you can turn even the smallest offerings into an abundance of hope. Make us generous in spirit as we seek to center the needs of our most vulnerable neighbors. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
Our call to prayer this morning comes from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ears pay close attention to my request for mercy. If you kept track of sins, Lord, who would stand a chance? But forgiveness is with you. That's why you are honored. I hope, Lord, my whole being hopes, and I wait for God's promise. My whole being waits for my Lord. More than the night's watch waits for the morning. Yes, more than the night's watch waits for the morning. Israel, wait for the Lord, because faithful love is with the Lord, because great redemption is with our God. Our God is the one who will redeem Israel from all its sin. O Lord God, your hand has come upon us, and by your Spirit we have been set down somewhere that we don't recognize. This valley is dark and our fear abounds as you guide us around these dry bones that lay forgotten on the ground. Only you know if they will one day live again, and for us, this is where we wait to see what will happen. We wait with bated breath to hear the rattling of life, but it hasn't come. God, when it feels like our hope fades, remind us that we are not cut off completely from you. Remind us that you hold the breath of life in your power. Speak now, God, so that we will know that you will act. Calm our fears and remind us of the joys and gratitudes that are still abundant during this time of crisis. Remind us in our deep loneliness of your deep love. We are grateful for our homes, for the food in our pantries, and for the fullness of spring. We are grateful for healthcare workers who are faithful in their calling and grocery store clerks who courageously go into work every day. We are grateful for your constant presence in our lives and the faithful ministry of the church. Help us to reach out to each other in new and intentional ways and to continue this ministry to one another as the family of God. This morning, we lift up prayers that have weighed heavily on our hearts all week. We ask that you help all of us as we adjust to the rapidly changing world we now live in. We pray for children of all ages who are home from school, daycare, and other parts of their regular schedules. Give them and their parents patience, especially when it's hard to understand why playdates, after-school activities, and fun things aren't a good idea. We pray for teachers and students who are missing each other and adapting to a life of learning outside of a traditional classroom. We pray for those who have and will lose employment, hours, and income. We pray for everyone who is suffering from the loss of social interaction, particularly those in nursing homes who may not understand what's happening. Please be with them and ease their confusion and fear. We pray for helping organizations who are doing their best to help the vulnerable, bring success to their fundraising efforts so that they may be the most effective in their areas of service. We pray for the restored health of loved ones and for all who are ill. We pray for those who are sheltering in place with unstable or abusive households, parents, spouses, and other family members. Show us every day how you reanimate dry bones. Help us to see how you breathe the breath of life into more than we realize. Keep us safe and healthy and help our leaders to make wise decisions to bring this pandemic to a conclusion. And so we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14, from the message. 
God grabbed me. God's spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around and among them, a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones, bleached by the sun. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, master God, only you know that. He said to me, prophesy over these bones, dry bones. Listen to the message of God. God, the master, told the dry bones, watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you'll come to life. I'll attach sinews to you, put meat on your bones, cover you with skin and breathe life into you. You'll come alive and you'll realize that I am God. I prophesied just as I'd been commanded. As I prophesied, there was a sound and, oh, rustling. The bones moved and came together, bone to bone. I kept watching. Sinews formed, then muscles on the bones. Then skin stretched over them, but they had no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Tell the breath, God the master says, come from the four winds. Come, breath. Breathe on these slain bodies. Breathe life. So I prophesied just as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came alive. They stood up on their feet, a huge army. Then God said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There's nothing left of us. Therefore prophesy, tell them, God, the master says, I'll dig up your graves and bring them out alive, O oh, my people. Then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. When I dig up graves and bring you out as my people, you'll realize that I am God. I'll breathe my life into you and you'll live. Then I'll lead you straight back to your land, and you'll realize that I am God. I've said it, and I'll do it. God's decree. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Last Saturday afternoon, my dear friend Alan Schraus and his family set out from their house in Greensboro for a walk. Alan and his family of four children and his spouse Jenny left their house to go for a walk after more than a week of being inside and socially distanced from all of their neighbors. As they turned the corner from their house onto Magnolia Street, they heard applause and cheering. There at the corner of Magnolia Street, they found the street full of neighbors clustered into small family groups, all appropriately spaced, but many with their arms raised, shouting, clapping, waving noisemakers even and all with their attention focused toward the porch of a yellow four-square house, which is where Alan heard the baritone voice of Father Milton saying, I now pronounce you husband and wife. A wedding? Is this a wedding? Alan asked. Oh yes, the neighbors said, and they told him about the young man whom they had known since he was a boy. Alan said to his wife, Jenny, grab your camera. She took two quick photos there on the front steps of the house that that young man had grown up in, surrounded by that congregation of neighbors on Magnolia Street. 
one of his neighbors, a physician, said, I remember helping deliver him when he was born. Congratulations, mazel tov, cheers, they all shouted. All manner of well wishes that were given to that couple. All kinds of words of life and of hope and of blessing. My hope is that wherever you find yourself in these days of great uncertainty and of change and of tumult, that you will know and trust that God is always up to more than we can dream or imagine. That God is breathing life into places that look like nothing but dead bones to us. That God and hope in God can free us to live in the present with a deep trust that God will never leave us. That's what that refrain from Psalm 136 that I've been saying to myself all week, for the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. That's what that's about. That's what this incredible capacity of God's to bring life new life out of hard and difficult things. My hope and prayer for you this week is that your gaze might be turned to moments and spaces and neighborhoods and people in which God is breathing, in which God is breathing new life, where God is bringing life and sustaining grace and goodness, even in the face of things that frighten us. in the face of things that we think nothing good can come of this. May it be so. How firm a foundation. We will sing the third and fifth stanzas. I call thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not thee overflow, there I will be with thee thy troubles to bless, and will sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. The soul that on Jesus hath been for repose, I will not, I will not desert to its foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never know. go from this place to any of your other places or to stay in one place. Go to join in the work of God in your everyday living. Go to love deeply and unreservedly even when love is hard to come by. Go to dream with God about what is possible even in the face of the impossible and go to open wide your hearts and your doors. 
Do all of these things with the knowledge that God has created you out of goodness. And that same God holds you close forever and always. The blessing of God Almighty be upon you all of your days, my friends. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet.